All right, hey guys, uh, it's Hi Fry here. So I wanted to take a few moments to um, clarify the Shimon Lee um, Encounter Edition drama, and I also wanted to give you a little bit of background on the original Shimon Lee and the uh, the two drivers that we have here in front of us. Um, so this is going to be kind of a hard video for me to make just because I don't really have everything um, like written out. I don't have a script or anything like that. Um, I purchased both of these IMs with my own money, okay? So I just wanted to make that, that one thing clear first. Um, I wasn't given these. Um, these were both purchased with my own money. Um, that does not affect whether or not I uh, make like an expose or a review or anything like that about a particular IEM. Um, so I just want to clarify that thing first. Um, so let's get into the history first. We're going to talk about the history of the Shimon Lee and then we'll, we'll get into this whole uh, driver debacle. Um, so in the beginning was the, the Shimon Lee, okay? Now, for anyone that's not aware, um, about, I'm trying to find something here that I can use to demonstrate. So, with any kind of IEM, there, there, are, two, there are two pieces, okay? So, you have the shell, alright, and then you have the driver. Now, this is the driver for the original Shimon Lee. Um, it is a composite-coded driver. Uh, it's also available on AliExpress. I, I own quite a few of these. One of the sellers says that it's a, um, a like a beryllium LCP hybrid. Um, I don't know how true that is. I always take these these things with a grain of salt, um, and that's why I have a microscope and why I why I view them under the microscope. So you can see this is a collection of a lot of diaphragms and stuff that I have. Um, some of them are rather beat up, but um, essentially any IM that I take apart, I uh, pull the drivers out of and I, I put them in a little case here. Now, I only started doing this somewhat recently, so there are a lot here that, that are missing. Um, but anyway, these are a collection of a lot of diaphragms that, that I've uh, collected over the past few months. So anyway... Um, but yeah, so I view them under the microscope just so I can see any differences. And now my tools, my equipment aren't, you know, it's not that great. So I can only get, a, a, you know, an average view or a decent view of the diaphragms themselves. I can't look close enough to see the, um, the you know, the composition of the material um, on like a, you know, molecular level or anything like that. It's just an average, run-of-the-mill, consumer-grade, you know, USB uh, microscope. Um, eventually, I would like to invest in something a little nicer, but this is what we have to work with today. So anyway, so in the beginning was the Shimon Lee, and here's the driver. Now, this, this driver is actually very capable. Um, it is a, a nice-sounding driver. It's not the most uh, resolute. It doesn't have a lot of resolution. Um, but it is capable of being tuned very well, and it is capable of some pretty decent resolution. I would say you could probably approach, nowadays with the way Chi-Fi is, you could probably approach the $100 range um, with this driver being installed, um, but I don't think you could do any better than that using this driver, because I just don't think it's it's that capable. Um, but yeah, so you could probably get up into about the $100 range uh, of an IEM. Now, the other component to this IEM is the shell here. And, and here, this is where the problems lie. Something with the design of the Shimon Lee shell, something with this cavity here and the way it's shaped, um, makes for a very peaky mid-range experience and then when you go to dampen it down um, it uh, gets rid of a lot of the, the upper treble um, and so anyway so that's that's why the original Shimon Lee was very peaky was just this combination here now it was possible to change out the driver and get a slightly better sound um, 
or place this driver in a different shell and get a better sound. Um, but this is the combination that we were given, so um, not great. But anyway, the shell itself is um, not a really expensive mold, but it's not a cheap mold. Um, this is a, a relatively uh, decent decent mold as far as um, you know cost of materials and stuff goes and the finish. So naturally, I think that, and I don't want to speak for um, Tang Zhu, but I think that they were a little disappointed with the sales and the reception of the original Shimon Lee. And so I'm sure they've had, you know, these shells laying around and they probably wanted to put them to use. Um, so what better way than to uh, release a revised model using a, a different driver? Now here's where the, the drama um comes into play uh, and for anybody that's gonna say oh well you know they sound different okay before I even get into this of course they're gonna sound different you're comparing a plastic shell with different internal volumes um, different dampeners and whatnot now this is this this is just for an example okay I do not have the Warner shell so I can't use it as an illustration so this is purely as an illustration but um, you can't, obviously they're going to sound different because you're, you're comparing a plastic shell to a metal shell and the, the volumes, the, like I said, the interior volumes are, are different. Um, the venting structure is different. Um, everything about it is different. And so here's where the shell comes into play. As far as tuning of an IEM goes or the sound of an IEM goes, the shell is equally as important as the driver itself, if not more important to the sound. So you could take a, a very competent driver and place it into an inferior shell, and you will get an inferior sound from that driver. Um, you can make the same driver sound completely different depending on what shell it is and how that shell is constructed. Okay? Um, and you can talk to the Hawaii bad boy about this. He'll confirm all this stuff. But but the the material, the hardness of the material and the material that it's made out of um, drastically affects the char character of the sound. Okay. Any any person who is um, an audio engineer or or an engineer that works in this hobby. Um, or in this field will tell you that material science is a very big thing that goes into making IEMs. Anyway, that being said, long story short, um, the Shimon Lee is going to sound different than the Warner. That's a given. It's redundant to say that they sound different because, of course, they're going to sound different. So here's where we're at. All right. So a few months back, uh, I don't know, I want to say, what, four or five months ago? So these, so the original Shimon Lee was released about nine or ten months ago. I think ten months ago. Not quite a year, almost a year. All right. And then um, <clears throat> Tang Zhu kind of went dark for a little while, and we hadn't really heard from them. And then they came out with this uh, plastic IM called the, the Warner. Okay. So for anybody not familiar, this is the Warner SG. Okay, this is the IM that I'm talking about whenever I refer to the Warner. So it's a plastic shell. It's a 10 millimeter driver. All right. Um, this is Linsoul's website. They got nothing to do with this, but I, I, I'm sh showing their their website just because um, this contains some of the marketing materials. So let's let's go over the marketing materials here. Um, now, when we talk about the driver, so it says 10 millimeter dynamic driver, remarkable performance, um, equipped with a 10 millimeter single driver, the Warner SG, uh, launched after five times of driver adjustments, and I'm sure that's true. That could be true. Um, the the driver in the Warner is different than any driver I've seen previously in that kind of type of driver. Um, it has a very close resemblance to that of KZ. And I'll show you guys in a little bit. So it's very similar to KZ driver. Um, but when we... Oh, where is it at? But when we go and we look at the driver, or the, what they're saying about the driver here, it is a PET diaphragm, okay? 
Um, and they clearly list that. Equipped with a 10 millimeter driver and it's got a PET diaphragm, okay? Alright, now here's the Encounter Edition, alright? And you'll notice, so you got the Encounter Edition, Shimon Lee, and it says 10 millimeter carbon nano dynamic driver. Now, carbon nano could be construed different ways. Um, it doesn't outright say carbon nano tube, um, which is a thing, and um, you can have nano um, classified nano uh, carbon particles um, infused particles in the in the uh, diaphragm so I'm not sure what they mean by this but I would just imagine that they're they're very small um, carbon particles that are inside but when we go and we scroll down to the driver here all right here's what we see new driver easy to be driven all right, and then it's got a bunch of stuff on the driver. And then when you look up here, the quotation carbon nano diaphragm, okay, used in the Shimmerly, and it just talks about it. But essentially, they've listed here, you know, several times that is a carbon nano driver. Okay, so it contains carbon inside it. All right, now here's where the drama comes into play. All right, and I'm sorry I don't have better illustrations of this because I already took the drivers apart, but this is what we're going to deal with today. Um, so this is the driver of the Shimon Lee uh, Encounter Edition. Okay, this is the driver that's inside it. But wait, this is not the driver that is inside the Encounter Edition. This particular driver right here is from the Warner. Okay, it's not from the Encounter Edition. This is a Warner driver that I, I have placed into the Encounter Edition shell. All right, and I will just say this. Um, now, I did glue it in here, so it's going to be a little hard, a little difficult to get out. Um, but I will say this, that um, when you put the Warner driver inside the Shimon Lee shell, the sound, uh, or the tuning, I should say, not the sound, the tuning is 90% that of the um, Encounter Edition driver. In fact, um, I think that it, it is actually a little bit better than the Encounter Edition driver, okay? So this is the same driver, same exact driver that is in the uh, currently, it's like $15 on AliExpress or $17 on Linsole. Um, but the Warner SG, this is the same exact driver for the most part. Okay, we'll get into the differences here in a second. But this is a, pretty much the same exact driver that is in the Warner SG. And it is pretty much the same driver that is in the um, the Encounter Edition. Okay. Um, now... The two problems, so they're very similar drivers, very, very, very similar drivers. Um, and it's not necessarily like Tangzu was misleading people with it being the um, sh the uh, Warner driver. It would have been nice for them to say that it it's based off of, because they could have technically said that it's um it's a um, an upgrade or whatever or a uh, refined driver. Uh, of the Warner driver, but they never listed that. They just said it's a new driver, but technically it's not because the PCB is the exact same, the metal shell is the exact same, the diaphragm is 90% the same, the magnetic structure is the same, the dampener is the same, okay? So all these things are the same except for the diaphragm is just barely changed, just ever so slightly changed. All right, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But anyway, so the Warner SG and the Shimon Lee Encounter Edition pretty much share the exact same driver. Like, I would say as far as how close they are, they are about 98% or like 95% um, related to each other, okay? 
So that being said, let's get into the next portion here. All right, so these are all examples of um, carbon drivers, okay? Um, now these are different types of carbon drivers. Um, so starting here on the left, this is a carbon nanotube, um, or supposedly carbon nanotube driver, all right? Um, I do not remember which one I got this out of. Um, somebody asked me earlier, and they, they, they asked if it was the, the um, uh, what is it? The Olina. Sorry, I had to look at it. Um, no, this is not the one out of the Olina. I, I apologize. It is actually this one right here. This is the one that is out of the Olina, um, if memory serves me correct. So these two are uh, carbon nanotube drivers um, as well as this one this is also a carbon nanotube driver these three down here these two and this one up here these are all DLC drivers or otherwise known as diamond like carbon okay so these three are DLC uh, drivers now this one here this is presumably a fake I'm not 100% sure. This is actually a KZ driver. Um, actually, no, yeah, this one is real. Um, but this is a, uh, they call it a carbon black driver. Okay. This is actually a very good driver, this one right here. Um, and like I said, this is KZ's driver. Now, this is supposedly like painted in carbon, or it's like a very, very heavy amount of carbon. You can see both sides are black. Um, here's an example of a fake carbon driver, okay? So this, see this driver right here? How it's black on the front? Um, I don't believe this, oh, shoot. I don't believe this is real carbon. Um, so it's black on the front, but I believe it's paint. And you can actually see it kind of fleck coming off there, that little dot there. But look at the other side. It's metallic. So it's some sort of paint or it's some sort of um, composite. But yeah, it's it, there's like a metallization on there, which I, only, I can only assume it's titanium. If anybody knows exactly what this is, um, please let me know. Um, supposedly, these were very expensive drivers, but as soon as I heard them, I, just, I thought they sounded like crap. Um, but yeah, so it's... It's like a layer of paint, and you can actually kind of see compared to the KZ driver. Um, the KZ driver is, is more uniform. It doesn't really look like it's painted, whereas this has got like bubbles in it and stuff. So whatever the, the KZ driver is, it's much higher quality. But these are all examples of quote-unquote carbon drivers. So like I said, we have three uh, CNT drivers or carbon nanotube drivers. Um, and then we have three DLC drivers here. Now let me bring out, I'm going to bring out the Warner driver first, and then I'm going to show you the supposed Carbon Nano um, Encounter Edition driver. So hang on one second. All right, so this is the, this is the Warner driver, okay? This is the Warner SG. Um, now, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a nice driver. It's not a bad driver, okay? Um, and just keep in mind, this is this is what it looks like inside the shell. Okay, so this is that's the driver right there. All right. Okay, so that's what the driver looks like, and that's what the diaphragm looks like. And then we'll just take a look at the back. You can see the PCB. It's got the, uh, the Tangzu branding on it. All right. Now this is the encounter edition driver okay and you can notice it's it's clear it, it's it's clear it's not cloudy it's not dark um to my eyes it looks like a pet driver it does not look like a dlc it doesn't look like it has any carbon particles in it the one thing you got to understand about carbon is carbon is black um now if you're using um like on a nano scale uh, you're putting carbon in a driver, it's going to change the color of it. Um, it's, it won't be black, 
but like see how these are, are clearish they're almost there these are dlc diamond like carbon so these are like hardened carbon um impregnated drivers they, they heat it up and they, they treat it somehow but um and it's also not as much it's on a smaller finer scale carbon nanotube is you can just look up what carbon nanotubes are but there it's a specific type of carbon it's an engineered uh, carbon it's got a certain molecular chain or whatever um, but anyway this, these appear darker because they either have higher concentrations of it um, but anyway but uh, also this the shape of the tubes and, and how they refract light and everything but anyway uh, I'm rambling now but so these are carbon nanotube these are DLC these are the painted black and then this is supposed to be like a nano carbon driver. Uh, I don't know, man. Especially since they said the um, the Warner driver was PET. Okay, so now here is the Warner driver next to the Encounter Edition driver. Okay, so this is supposedly like a carbon nano driver, and this is the um, a PET driver, just pure PET. Okay, PET just is plastic. It's like polyethylene something or whatever. You can look it up, but it's a form of plastic. So anyway, so this is PET, and this is supposed to be a uh, a carbon nano driver. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't believe it. All right, but here, <clears throat> excuse me. Here is where the difference lies between these two drivers. Okay. The Encounter Edition driver on the right is different from the uh, the Warner driver but just by a tiny amount, like these, one of the smallest amounts, okay? Um, and you can even see it, it's, it appears ever so slightly darker, but just barely. I mean, if there is any carbon in here, it's like 0.05% or something. It's the tiniest amount. It's very, like I said, the difference between these drivers is negligible it's like hardly anything when you listen to them side by side they sound almost completely identical I mean I would say that they do sound identical but they graph just ever so slightly different and like I said when you graph the the water driver in the um, encounter edition shell um, it just has a little bit more treble and that's it okay other than that that's it um, the encounter edition driver the only thing that makes it different, um, or makes it different from the water driver, in my opinion, are these um, these striations or these lines or whatever you want to call them on these uh, the surround ring. This is a like a formed surround ring on the edge. Um, this is done for two reasons. It's done for stiffening, and it's also to keep the driver from wrinkling. So when you have these these angular angular lines or whatever. Um, on top of this like dome shape for the surround ring because it's all made out of the same material anyway these lines help prevent it from from wrinkling and it also provides the driver with stability and rigidity um and anyway i counted more lines on the water driver than the the um encounter edition driver so this has less lines in it it also has a new feature where there, are, every so often, there is one line that does not go all the way across. It just kind of stops, um, whereas these go all the way from edge to edge of the of the dome to the surround to the outer ring. Okay, so these go all the way from the dome to the, the edge, um, whereas these, every so often, there's like one of them that'll stop halfway through, and it'll just go halfway, but. But anyway, yeah, these are our two diaphragms, and like I said, to, to, to me, to my eyes, I don't see any carbon here whatsoever, um, and I'm not trying to, like, come down on Tang Zhu for this, you know, it could be a factory-related issue or whatever, but either way, it's, um, it's misleading marketing, in my opinion, and so that's why I'm, I'm releasing this video. And I just kind of wanted to talk about it and kind of clear up the air a little bit because people say, okay, well, so, well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is that they're charging $20 more for an IM that they already had a driver to that they used in their 
budget offering that's like 15 bucks and and what makes it worse or what makes it hurt more is that the there's no difference in the shell so i took measurements of the shell and from what i can gather there is no difference between the original shimon lee shell and the encounter edition they are identical in every way shape or, and form except for one small area um and that is the the dampener inside that is the only thing that was changed it was that there's a different dampener being used because when you throw the the driver into the um into the original um shimon lee shell it it uh, the base graphs slightly different, but if you were to um, put the proper dampener in there, they sound identical, like no difference whatsoever. So technically, if if there are any of you modders out there and you want to make your own Encounter Edition without paying for one, you can take your original Shimon Lee and grab a, a pair of Wanners, if you have the Wanner too, take the drivers out and put them inside the original Shimon Lee and then add um, like maybe a, a Y3 on on top here or a Y4 maybe a Y5 I don't know but um but anyway yeah and um they'll they're it's like 90 it's like 95 percent okay so just a pro tip there for anybody that wants to mod their original Shimon Lee and mod it into a um an encounter edition so so that's the difference. So they're using the same shell. They're using the same driver from a previous IM. I be uh, um albeit with a very slightly different diaphragm. Um so there's everything's already there. It's already to go. Slap a nice coat of paint on it and you can continue to sell cuz I have no idea how much how many of these shells they have left over. I can only assume that they have a few. Because like I said, I think they were disappointed with the sales of the original. So they, they re-released it. And that's why we have the Encounter Edition. Um, but instead of sourcing a different driver, they just used the same driver and changed out the diaphragm for a, like a very... I don't even know why they used that diaphragm. Because it, it's, like I said, it's it's barely, barely different. I mean, I could zoom in my phone. My phone's not gonna look good it's gonna look bad but I mean they they're like pretty much identical so so anyway so lastly I just want to show you guys um, I want to show you the the KZ lineage of this driver here so I'll be right back and then I, I want to show you um, kind of the roots of this driver alright so before this video ends I only have two minutes left here but these are all the KZ drivers and KZ adjacent drivers that I've collected over the, the last few months. Um, and you can definitely see, um, let me just grab one at random. So you can definitely see an inspired design here. Okay. I'm not sure what type of revision, but it, they use the same shell. Um, and the PCBs, uh, I noticed, were changed. Um, just slightly so instead of having the round pads they have these like um, oblong or whatever well, I don't know whatever you call it um, rectangle rectangular kind of um, solder joints but yeah so those are different but you notice these little flaps you see these little metal flaps on the edges you can see them on all all of these drivers um, this is one thing that all KZ drivers have is they have these little these little metal flaps here on the on the ends um, I don't know if I can show you any better. Yeah, there we go. So there's a little metal flap there. And, um, and yeah, so essentially the, the Tang Zhu IMs have that same little flap there, that little metal flap on the edge. They have the same, same flap. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's, and you can see, so we got white glue on the side, but we have this little cutout here. And I mean, even the magnet structure and everything, I can show you um, really quickly if I can grab it. So this is a KZ motor structure. This might be the wrong size. I think this is a, no, that is a 10. Okay, so this is the motor from a, from a KZ uh, speaker. 
and this is the motor structure from the Warner um, and from the the Encounter Edition. So you can see they're they're pretty much identical. And lastly, before I go, guys, these are the KZ um, carbon black drivers I was telling you about, and this is the Olina driver. This is a true uh, carbon nanotube or true carbon driver. Um, you can't really see its darkish appearance from the outside, but as soon as you take this plate off, you can see it. So, Anyway, I hope that was informative. I hope you guys have a good night. I'll catch you later. Peace.